So um, what uh, these uh, people developed, the product that they developed, um, is actually something that's been around for a long time. Um, it's a medium chain triglyceride oil, or MCT oil for short. And um, it's a, been known since uh, the 1960s, or maybe even sooner, that uh, the liver metabolizes medium chain triglyceride oil to ketone bodies. And ketone bodies are very simple molecules that your cells can use as an alternative fuel. Dr. George Cahill in the 1960s discovered that the neurons can use ketone bodies as right. an alternative fuel to glucose. Mm. And this has a lot to do with why we were able to evolve as a species. Um, during times of feast, we would build up carbohydrate or glucose stores in our body and add fat to our bodies. And during times of famine, when there was no food for days and days, uh, you would first use up your carbohydrate stores, your glucose stores, and then switch over and start burning fat and making it to ketone bodies. Um, and the ketone bodies go directly into the brain circulation and the brain can use them as a fuel. So right. your brain, your body would basically switch over from using glucose to ketone bodies. Right. So um, what these people, um, you know, they, they look uh, at this biochemical fact and um, it occurred to them that if people eat medium chain triglyceride oil, they will have ketones circulating. Mm. Well, this, this fits in, by the way, with, with uh, weightlifters use medium chain triglycerides uh, often just before they perform because it gives them a burst of energy mm -hmm. um, to, to enable them to lift heavier weights. Yeah, so that's it, true. It, so it's feeding the muscles as well, mm -hmm. as, as, well as the brain. Right, mm -hmm. and, and much of it is converted directly to energy instead of being stored as fat. Right, the li um, liver processes it straight away. Right, to right. energy. Mm -hmm. So um, the thing is, um, in this country, we're using oils that don't contain medium chain triglycerides normally. Right. Soybean oil, olive oil does not, um, uh, safflower, uh, none of the, the peanut oil, none of the common oils that we use contain medium chain triglycerides. Right. However, what I learned from this patent application <laughs> is that medium chain triglyceride oil is derived from coconut oil. Right. Well, when I read that, I knew I'd seen coconut oil in the health food stores and it just set me off on a, a frenzy of uh, research uh, that particular night. Um, I looked online uh, about coconut oil. Um, I had to remind myself which are the short and medium chain, long chain fatty acids. Um, I figured out um, from a nutritional breakdown of coconut oil how that it was about 60% medium chain triglyceride oil. And uh, uh, looking at the dosage that they used for their studies, uh, which was about 20 grams of medium chain triglyceride oil, I figured out that um, about just a little over two tablespoons of coconut oil would give you 20 grams of medium chain triglyceride oil. Two tablespoons, that's not yeah, a little big over, dose. It's not right. a big deal, it's right. not a big deal. Um, so, um, unfortunately that night, uh, it was too late, it was about 1 a.m. at the point that I thought I have to go to sleep. Uh, we had a 9 a.m. appointment in mm -hmm. St. Pete, but we, there was no way to get coconut oil before that. Right. So um, we went on down um, and uh, for the um, screening for Steve, and uh, he had an MMSE done at that point. And uh, the very disappointing news was that he needed to have an MMSC of at least 16 to qualify for the study, and he only scored a 14. A 14, so this is compared to a normal of 13, he was at the 14 at level. At the 14 level, which okay. is getting quite um, you know, down in the low moderate range. Yes. Um, so he did not qualify, and we were very shocked, very disappointed. Yes. Um, the doctor there uh, said, uh, well, let's evaluate him a little bit further while you're here and we'll talk. You know, she spent considerable amount of time with us. We really appreciated that. Mm. And um, she said, let's do this clock study. It's uh, a specific, very specific for Alzheimer's disease. So she asked Steve to draw a clock. And um, it was, uh, <laughs> you or I would not look at that and see that this is a clock. And Steve later said that he uh, really could not even picture what a clock looked like at that point. Mm. Um, several random small circles and uh, several numbers, uh, n not even one through 12. Um, and uh, the physician took us aside, took me aside 
and she said, you know, he's getting a little worse than moderate. He's starting to get into the severe range. So um, we left very distressed. Um, we knew there was a screening the next day. There was still a little hope there that maybe he would get into that drug trial. Um, it happened to be a vaccine uh, to remove beta amyloid from the brain. Um, so um, I recalled that I had seen coconut oil at a health food store. I had always wondered, why is coconut oil there? There's some misconceptions about it. Sure. And uh, so we uh, stopped at the health food store. I thought, what have we got to lose? You know, we're going to try this. Um, in the patent application, um, the studies that they did um, showed that about half the people, almost half, 47 percent, had an improvement in their cognitive scores, their memory scores, mm. um, over the period of time that they tested. And the other half declined very slightly. Um, so I felt, well, this, this is something that could improve them and perhaps at least stabilize. And, you know, I felt like, okay, we can live with where we're at now. If, even if he stays the same, you know, we can mm -hmm. live with this. So, you know, what have we got to lose? We're going to try this. Um, so we picked up the, the coconut oil and um, in the studies they had given the dose at breakfast. So I thought, okay, tomorrow morning, you know, we'll give it to him. And um, he was scheduled the next day for uh, another screening at, um, in Tampa. Right. Um, and this was at one in the afternoon that he was scheduled. Um, so I went ahead and put just over two tablespoons in his oatmeal. We had a little, uh, coconut oil tends to be semi-solid at room temperature. So I thought, well, we'll put it in a little hot cereal and uh, that will melt down. He'll have something to eat it with instead of just taking it right off the spoon. Oh. And I took an equivalent amount myself. I thought I'm not gonna make him take anything <laughs> I won't take. <laughs> so um, <clears throat> He, uh, he, you know, had breakfast and then um, several hours later we were heading down to Tampa and I tried to help him, you know, remember things like what is the season, it was spring, he couldn't even remember the word spring. We must have talked about it ten times. Mm -hmm. He could not come up with the word over and over mm -hmm. and um, the month, you know, the, the date, uh, things like that. He couldn't mm -hmm. remember. Um, the last time we had been there he had, could not remember the, the town, the, the county, you know. But Even you, though we'd been there many, many times. Right, but you later found mm. that it takes approximately three hours mm -hmm. for the coconut oil to have an effect. Right, right. Mm. So that explains why, uh, you know, a couple hours later we weren't seeing anything. Um, but what happened when he got there for the, the test, they uh, took him away to do the MMSE. And when he came back, he was actually kind of disappointed. He said, I don't think I did very well. And, uh, but the research assistant came in and she started taking his blood pressure and she talked about drawing blood. And I said, well, what's going on here? Uh, how did he do? And she says, oh, didn't he tell you? He got an 18. So he went from 14, 14 to, to 18, 18 the very next day. In one day? In one day. With two tablespoons of coconut oil. Right. And That's astonishing. And, and it, it kicked in, his memory kicked in what, he the, remembered. The, his memory kicked in. Kicked in at that the point test, for the mean. test. Right, right. Um, he remembered it was spring. He knew he was in Tampa in Hillsborough County. He knew he was at the the he they named the building he was in. He knew what floor he was on. You know things that he could not mm. recall at all. Marvel. You know for the previous test. Absolutely, Mark. Uh, so he um, qualified for that study, and Wonderful. we were ecstatic. Yes. And um, at that point, I didn't know for sure was it coconut oil. Or was it pure luck, or you know what what happened? Uh, I wasn't 100% sure, so I thought, well, but we're going to continue this. Right. And I had read in their application that some people did improve the very first day, the very mm. first time they took it. Mm. So I thought, okay, well he's maybe perhaps one of these people. So we're going to keep this going. And um, the next few days, I did uh, continue to give it to him for breakfast. Mm -hmm. And then I started researching everything I could get my hands on about coconut oil, uh, looking for recipes. Um, basically decided that maybe we'll convert over or do a little more of our cooking, you know, at other meals, you know, with uh, coconut oil, adding it to that. And um, so I started researching uh, ketones, um, and I came across the name of Dr. Richard Beach.